One of the Facebook internal studies that you found talks about how Instagram harms teenage girls. Oh, yeah. One study says 13.5% of teen girls say Instagram makes thoughts of suicide worse. 17% of teen girls say Instagram makes eating disorders worse. And what's super tragic is Facebook's own research says, as these young women begin to consume this eating disorder content, they get more and more depressed, and it actually makes them use the app more. And so they end up in this feedback cycle where they hate their bodies more and more. Facebook's own research says, it is not just that Instagram is dangerous for teenagers, that it harms teenagers, is that it is distinctly worse than other forms of social media. Facebook said just last week it would postpone plans to create an Instagram for younger children. Last month, Haugen's lawyers filed at least eight complaints with the Securities and Exchange Commission, which enforces the law in financial markets. The complaints compare the internal research with the company's public face, often that of CEO Mark Zuckerberg, here testifying remotely to Congress last March. Uh, my name is Ruby Buckholtz. Um, quite honestly, probably not until a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, it probably was until like junior year of high school that I really thought about it. Um, I've always been very athletic and in sports and stuff, so that's been more like, I guess I had the idea of uh, being stronger or being more able to do stuff that um, more equipped, if that yeah, makes, more yeah, able body. That, that was something that's a okay, big cool. part of my life. Cool. I love doing that. Um, and so, yeah, I see the influencers that are like, there's this, but I feel like it's also, I've noticed a huge difference between like, male and female influencers like there's girls that are you know athletic influencers and a lot of them like they have podcasts they have you know this is what i eat in a day they have this like so theirs is more styled towards typically theirs is more styled towards this is what i do this is how i'm successful and this is how i got here and i want to bring you along this journey with me when guys it's oh look at me yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know okay. oh, mostly a positive thing that mm -hmm. social media is brought around because um, especially like I feel like in the last year there's been a lot more openness about being insecure mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of girls where you're like oh that's like my dream body and they come out and they're like I'm insecure about myself mm -hmm. you know I have problems I you know see therapy myself and like I feel like because those people that people look up to are talking about their own insecurities and how they have to deal with it I think that's making them a lot more confident and they're like oh I'm not the only one you know, yeah, yeah, I agree. School and high school freshmen, I weighed like 230, so I was pretty self-conscious about my body and stuff like that. And I just remember like, it was honestly when I first got like social media that I was kind of highlighted. Like I was always insecure as a younger kid because it kind of felt outcasted by being overweight and whatnot. But once it got to like, high school when people had their like instagrams and stuff and that stuff started to get really popular it was like like that stuff started to really get pointed out because i didn't feel like i could like be in a p picture and kind of fit in like everyone else or wear certain things like everyone else and even like little things like shopping and whatnot like it's just not as fun because mm -hmm. you don't feel like you can necessarily style yourself the same way so mm -hmm. So I'm Haley, mm -hmm. and I'm a microbiology major here. Um, I'm interested in pathology, so I plan on going to like an MD PhD school. Um, but I'm from Southern Idaho, and I worked on a, like a sheep ranch for a long time. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and you said you're a freshman. Yeah. Okay. okay, cool. For me, it was actually more my mom than anybody else. I have like two sisters and a brother, but they're like my half siblings, and so they're not as like. They weren't living with me at the time, but my mom and my sister and I were all like six foot exactly, but we're all different weights, and so then that like we hold it in different places and stuff like that. So I think my mom kind of like telling me about like how I look different than like my sister or her and stuff like that. So I'd say that's like numbers. So more on how they looked, but definitely sometimes numbers because I wouldn't say that I was like the more popular type of person in high school. So definitely that was kind of a thing. But also I didn't feel as bad about it because I had just started getting on social media so I felt like that would like come with time right. or stuff like that. So right. definitely more look. Yeah. 
I don't think it's really fair to compare. I mm -hmm. think it's different. So, and like, I mean, that's pretty much it. I don't think it's fair to compare because I think that there's both like problems on both gender sides and, and it ties into culture too. But like, I think they're different. So like with like women and stuff, I feel like there's a lot more of a like forced aesthetic, like in, you know, that's what I see from my mm -hmm. perspective. But as a man, I, I think it's more of like a, for me personally, at least it was much more of a silent issue. Like, you know, like, I don't really know how to describe because as a dude, like, not many guys that I know in high school, like, they don't have, like, a Visco or anything. They don't have, like, Pinterest right. pages and stuff like that. So it's more of a silent thing. But, like, if, you know, if a group of dudes are, like, posting a beach pics with all their, like, yeah. abs flexed. Or if they're wearing, like, even expensive clothing, like, that outcasts a certain type of individual. So that type of uh, exclusion is kind of, I think, more on the man's side. That's what I experienced. Like, it was more silent. Right. Um, when I was a kid, I never wore like any makeup and obviously I wear some like not a lot I would say but I definitely do wear some and I can't always say that it's for me You know some girls are always like it's for me. It's for me, which I love that I wish it was but there is that subliminal message of like I'm doing it because of this. What does it, what does okay. it look like? Yeah. So in terms of like followers, I follow like Megan the Stallion. Okay, I try perfect. to follow people that like I almost don't look like Right. So then yeah. I can't really right. assess a difference. Right. But um, I use Instagram as kind of like a blog. Well, not really, but just like a diary. Mm -hmm. um, I only post really like monthly recaps. And so mm -hmm. then it's more about not how I look, but more about what I've done mm -hmm. and like friends and things like that. So yeah. I would say that is kind of what I use it for. Yeah. Kind of just like showing what I did that month. Yeah. I mean, I think something that I noticed, especially when I lost a lot of weight, is that it never, it never fucking ends. Cause my, uh, my roommate, he's a personal trainer. And so like, I started lifting with him last year and I go to the gym a bunch and like, you know, we both work on ourselves a lot, but then we see like TikTok bodybuilder pages or whatever it is. It could be Instagram. It does not even matter. And everybody's better than you, no matter what, like you could, you could hit a crazy fitness goal. Like I lost a bunch of weight and I'm still not satisfied. So I think that always applies. And another thing that ties into that is like the profitability of those types of pages on social media and whatnot, because everyone who wants like everyone who sees that better image that they aspire to is spending time watching it and like those people make money off of that so yeah, no, that. i remember like <laughs> i would i'd be in high school or like middle school it didn't it didn't matter really but like i'd come in on gym class day and i had like early gym classes so it was like fresh in the morning and like those mild days i'd be like fuck <laughs> <laughs> like, like that was terrible because i'd be i get i like start my day off performing super badly and like nobody's judging me honestly i think it was more of a me thing but then like after that I'm sweaty the whole day and it's like, I think I think that comparison really was just like the toughest part. And that ties into the social media where it's like, you can never stop comparing yourself to what you're seeing on any type of feed or whatever it is. Right. So that is, it's just all comparison. Cause even now, like I'm not satisfied, so. Right. Hi, I'm Sonia. Well, I mean, back then it really, it was a little bit harder to like engage in. It's, it's a lot easier to engage with social media nowadays. Mm -hmm. especially with things on phones and apps because before everything was just on a computer and then you had to like wait for the computer to load up you mm -hmm. know and like it was just like there was lots and lots of barriers to being right. engaged in social media whereas now it's it's super 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 simple mm -hmm. so I feel like these past you know like I I just got a snapchat like two mm -hmm. years ago mm -hmm. um, and I had Instagram for a while but it was always on my computer and I just got the app for it you mm -hmm. know and I definitely feel like it like just by getting these two apps my exposure to like body image stuff has just gone like through the roof especially mm -hmm. with like these like uh any of the filters and things like that like because sure. i like it, back then if you wanted to do like a filter you had to go to like your own website yeah you had to load a picture yeah you know <laughs> and it like didn't look real look realistic yeah. anyways you know yeah um, we're like now it's just like boom 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 you're mm -hmm. it's, it's just it's very immediate yeah um, well I, I do think you know there's there's always benefit in introspection mm -hmm. you know and, 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 and also to you know constant introspection you know if I'm seeing these but also to at the same time the very basis of these platforms is engagement right and so I think that because of that the system itself is kind of flawed in a way to whatever it gets us engagements. And if we see normal things, we not we not, might not be in, is engaged. And right. so that platform is not, it's not gonna work as well. Right. So just kind of based on the premise of the platform, 
I'm not really sure. We'd have to change the premise. Right. So over spring break, in the middle of shooting for this documentary, I happened to go on a study trip to LA to check out fashion companies we could be working for in the future as current students. We happened to visit Savage X Fenty, a company creative directed by superstar Rihanna. Savage X Fenty is known for their inclusion of all body types in advertisements, as well as size options. Where Victoria's Secret has fallen behind, Savage X Fenty has picked up and taken opportunity on the desire of body positive representation. Their huge success over the past couple of years, I think, is just more proof that people actually do believe in this and they're willing to spend money on clothing that makes them feel more confident about their body. Yeah, and I suppose, like, maybe, I mean, yeah, I was going to say, like, maybe try to prioritize, like, in your, in your own feed when you're liking and subscribing things, um, you know, make sure to prioritize uh, healthy, healthy representations, healthy content providers, yeah. um, and then make sure to really engage with them more as an effort to kind of change your own algorithm. Yeah, um, that's pretty much just regulating myself and, um, you know, kind of like I said, kind of like the fight attitude where, you know, if I'm looking at things and watching things, I'm like, okay, well, I know that this is edited. I know that there's filters applied. I know that, well, in the, you know, we're very, very close to, we already have face swaps and everything, mm -hmm. you know, and we have AI models. So just kind of, just like really, and you know, like back in the day too, we did kind of have like, you know, pre-Photoshop and stuff like that, you know? So, mm -hmm. so throughout time, as, you know, since media has come, or modern media has come, um, you know, it, things have been edited and filters have been applied. It's just now it's so much more prevalent and it's so much more convincing. So I think, you know, whenever I'm engaging in social media or just in media in general, I just kind of like do like the grain of salt thing where like I just kind of have to, or uh, maybe like a type of suspension of disbelief, mm -hmm. like when you're reading a book. You know? Right, 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 right. And you're uh, like, this isn't real. Kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pretty much just be like, I know that this is not, this is 100% not real. Right. Right. You know, and just kind of take it in, like, as if it's fiction. Right. Yeah.